Greetings from St. Joseph College Seminary. It has been a long time since I gave you an update. So I'm sorry for that, but so much has been happening that we hardly have time to sort of pause and reflect and assess what has happened. So let me try to catch up to speed. First of all, we had our groundbreaking last May, as you know, May 1st, and it was a gloriously uh, attended and beautiful event. Um, we had so many people here. We had fun afterwards to the point where it was dark and everyone's still at the barn and enjoying themselves, etc. And a lot of excitement and momentum um, was engendered by that event. Right after that, we took off. We all left for the propedeutic pilgrimage, as we called it. So we took the new class last year and we brought them over to Italy and they had so much experience in a, such a short time, both with the professors that they had there and, and the, the art and the architecture sort of expanding their minds and being part of the Universal Church. It was an incredibly beautiful event for them. And that, they were there for a month. However, as you all know, right in the middle of that, we got a new bishop. So the, the difficulty of trying to have all of these different moving parts go forward and at the same time um, have a new shepherd here that hasn't been part of that and didn't know exactly what was all going on. Frederick Ackerblum, our advancement uh, director, said that it's kind of like having someone come onto a massive highway on an on-ramp and he's got to know what's going on in all the other cars. And that's true, without necessarily stopping all of the traffic. So it's been a bit difficult you know, to get every piece of this program uh, uploaded, as it were. So we kind of tapped the brakes a little bit. You may notice if you come out to the seminary, we haven't actually begun any construction, which doesn't mean that we're not going to, it just means that we found ourselves in a position when we got back from, uh, from Italy, um, where the numbers didn't come out as quite as good as I had hoped. And then we had a new bishop, and so it was time for tapping of the brakes a little bit. A little bit. So we kind of slowed things down, we did some more value engineering, we're looking at the financing costs of this, of this project and bringing the bishop on board and getting his advice. And he brings a lot to the table with respect to this. He has a lot of experience both in fundraising as well as in construction. So he had some good advice for us and part of that advice was to say, you went for the whole thing. In other words, the original goal, if you recall, was 22 million. And when we raised 22 million, we said, I wonder if we should just go ahead and try to get the rest of the pieces of the puzzle. Because remember, we wanted to do a couple piazzas and the loges and a kitchen and a terrace and a chapter house for the people of God to come to if they were to come to mass here and have a group that could come afterwards and go into a building kind of specifically for them to receive talks and things of that nature. That was kind of the ultimate vision of the, of the, of the build out. And so we kind of went for it and we raised a couple more million dollars. Um, and yet, with the financing costs, we didn't quite make our goal. Insofar as when you do a fundraising project like this, a capital construction project, people are in different places with how often and how frequent they pay off their, their pledges. And so some might pledge for three years, five years, some could pledge for 10 to 20 years, and which is wonderful. The only difficulty is you spend all of your money relative to construction in the first year and a half to two years. So the rest of that you have to borrow. And so the financing costs on this got really high. And so the bishop said, let's tap those brakes, let's build what we can and not everything and raise a bit more money um, if we can to kind of cover those costs such that we don't incur any debt on this one. We have, for example, on the last capital project, we have $1.7 million still to pay off. Now we have pledges for $2.1 million, but those pledges again are out uh, over a decade from now. So it'll eat up that, that overage that we have. And so we're gonna even try to pay that off as well. That way when that money comes in, we're looking at um, money that can assist us in the operations as well as in the upkeep of this place. Because at some point, we need to begin to develop uh, a plan for the, the sustainability of the seminary. Not just the, the buildings, not just the here and now, but for things down the road that need to be fixed. So we don't put future seminarians, rectors, spiritual directors in a quagmire of now how do I pay for this thing? So that's kind of our goal right now and I would say that realistically, conservatively, I think that we're going to be building construction somewhere around January, February. 
um, since we're not in a hurry necessarily to get it done and that we'll, we'll take that time to fine tune things as well as to hopefully raise a little bit more money uh, to cover all the overage costs. Obviously the other piece that we had this summer, as soon as I got back from overseas, I actually came back early because I was attending the bishop's ordination. And so the first ordination we had this summer was a new bishop. And then we had, of course, the ordination of the deacons, six of them. And then we had the ordination of the priests, seven of them. That's three ordinations in the month of June. Talk about sort of revving everything up and a beautiful witness and sign of everything that we're doing here. All of a sudden, you've got 13 new ordained men, and 14 if you count, if you count the bishop, who is the one coming here um, to, to serve and assist them and to, to lead them in their ministry. It was a glorious outpouring of grace in just one month, the month, of course, of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. What better way could we celebrate the Sacred Heart of Jesus than giving him 14? We had a brief respite in July in which we were attempting to sort of refashion some of the things that we do here. In anticipation of a new class coming in, the India class, um, there's nine of them. And we got to thinking with our bishop relative to some of the things that we've done in years past that were germane to the situation that we had when we were still living in Charlotte. And so how do you form the if you will, the, the jump start or the initiation of these guys. Because one of the hallmarks of our initiation time together was trying to create bonds between the new class, between the members of the new class. And so we kind of wanted to reformat things a bit um, and make sure that we were putting um, our best foot forward relative to all that they're going to experience in the course of their time in seminary. So basically what we did was a, a kind of um, uh, tutelage in wonder. We, we began the entire experience for them by not just a regular orientation, but also giving them little hints about what they're going to go through over the course of the next four years. So whether it's uh, a, a touch of theology, a touch of poetry, a touch of literature, a touch of art, architecture, kind of taking them through all that goes to form uh, the mind and the heart of an individual, talking about the virtues and the cultivation of, of the man. And then at the end of that, we did our skills challenge. Normally we do our skills challenge in October, but this was quite effective to do it early on, and we did it here on campus. And the reason that I think it was very effective is not only does it have that bonding effect for the men, because there's a lot of suffering that goes on in the skills challenge, but it turns a guy inside out, because the challenges that they have to do are not just physically demanding, it's the physical demand on them that allows for, if you will, the, the emotional life to come out, the leadership qualities or lack thereof to kind of be manifest. Because when you're sort of broken down and you're tired, et cetera, it's not just to break you down, it's to say, who are you? And I think that the men uh, were surprised at how much they saw, not just about each other, but of course about themselves. One of the seminarians had mentioned to his parents that he learned more about himself in two days than he had in his whole life. And that's what it's geared for. But that also helps us as persons who assist in their formation um, to kind of know them up front and to see what we have to work on in the course of the first year in particular as a propedeutic stage that Father Becker leads, but also in their next three years after that relative to their discipleship stage. As is normally the case every year, we have seminarians in this new class from all over the place. We have one from St. Bernard's in Linville, that's our second one from there. We have one from Queen of the Apostles. We have another one from St. Gabriel's. And we have one from Our Lady of Grace in Greensboro. Two from St. Dorothy's in Lincolnton, And of course, the usual cadre that we get from St. Mark's. Father Putnam probably wants a shout out for that. Um, he has more seminarians coming to the seminary than any other parish. Um, now you might say it's because he's the largest, but it's also because they're doing a great job in the cultivation of, of young men for the priesthood. And we're also hoping and expecting really that as all the men that have graduated from here and are now priests, remember because all the Alpha class is out there and one from the Bravo class, as they get into the parishes and they have an intimate knowledge of the program here, they're gonna be the ones to identify and to attract and to assist the young men uh, to foster their own vocations to the priesthood and 
and hopefully come for a visit here at St. Joseph. We've had several gentlemen already come visit this year already in just September. Four already have come for a visit. I also want to thank the many unnamed persons who just send money from time to time. It's not a small thing. Um, sometimes the amount might be small, but the amount of people is oftentimes um, somewhat significant. And that makes a huge difference for us. And it's one of the things in speaking with our bishop that we need to begin to turn our sights to. Because basically we've been in a building mode ever since we started the seminary. Uh, nine years ago, we've always been building something. And as that comes to a close in the next couple of years, we want to be turning our sights to the sustainability, as I mentioned, of this place. And part of that is the, the daily, the weekly, the monthly, the annual giving. And in addition to that, of course, just I've had a couple people come and speak to me about wanting to do something in their estate. So what are their ultimate plans um, for their estate when they go to God themselves? And that's something that we want to begin to look into. Um, both for myself, I'm at the time in which I better make sure that my affairs are in order, um, but for everyone really to say that I want to have an impact and how do I want to have that impact? Um, including us in some sort of an estate gift is a way to ensure that this place and the men that are getting formed here um, can continue. As we approach our 10th year, you begin to think about the various things that you have done, things that have been accomplished, and I just want to reiterate the fact that the impetus to do this in the first place was because God was drawing men to the priesthood in this diocese and we didn't want to send them away. That we want them to be formed here. But when I say that, not just by the bishop or the priests that are here, but also by the persons um, in the parishes that help to foster those vocations. Everyone plays a part in this. And what's so beautiful now is that they're getting to see these young men that they, they watch go through seminary, those who participate in the life of the seminary, they begin to watch them as now they become priests out there. And so that kind of longevity, that sort of family history that we now have already. So I encourage you, especially in your parishes, to, to be the person that goes up to a young man and says, have you thought about the priesthood? When you see something special in them, and if you have a seminary in the parish, to make sure when they come home, for their break, et cetera, that you take a moment to talk to them, maybe take them for a meal, maybe invite them to your house or um, give them some kind of encouragement and even some feedback if you think it's something that, we, that needs to happen. Um, but just to make sure that the responsibility for the formation of the men doesn't land on anyone's shoulders. It, it lands on, the, on the, the entire local church uh, here and to some degree the universal church, but specifically you and me and everyone else that's hearing this and is in the pews and the parishes to assist these men in growing up into holy priests. One of the ways to, to do that and to get to know them is not just when they come back to the parishes, but to come here. Uh, we have an open house uh, this year on December 14th from 11 to 3. And I know it's only September, but you know as well as I do that the store is going to be putting up Christmas things in about two days. Um, so we're all kind of making our plans for what's going to happen during the, the high holy days of, of Christmas, etc. So I want to get that date out to you. Um, mark your calendar if you can come. It's such a fun day. It's just relaxed. People just come when they want between that, those times. And Deacon always has food going on in the barn and there's games going on and you kind of have an open house here. The sisters make cookies. The house is decorated for Christmas. So try to make it a, a point if you can, even just for something for fun with you and your family to come and spend some time with us, get to know the men and assist in this most important work of formation. So thank you for taking the time to listen to the update. I ask you, beg you for your prayers, for myself, for the other fathers, and for the, all the priests that are involved with the formation here, and for our seminarians and their, their joyful perseverance. We don't want a kind of perseverance that's just sort of, you know, holding fast and white knuckling it all the time, but a joyful perseverance that realizes that the struggles and the labors they go through uh, bear much fruit, and hopefully the fruit of assisting you in your own spiritual life. So God bless you, and I hope to see you at the very least on December 14th. Bye-bye.